Hello folks, today I want to talk about the Silicon Graphics O2. It was an important machine in the late 1990s, especially for graphics applications, especially for 3D computer animation. And I'll talk about uh, this a little bit later. Uh, why today? Why uh, a video about the O2 today? Well, because I'm getting rid of it. Uh, it's been sitting for about 20 years in my studio and I just want to abandon it now. And I enjoyed that computer so much that I devote this video to the O2. Looking out of my studio window, this is one of the towers of the Cologne Cathedral. But we're talking about the blue object at the top of the shelf now. I purchased it in, I think, 1998, maybe 1997, probably after having seen it at the SIGGRAPH conference in New Orleans in 1996. I then had free access to an Onyx workstation in my town with a software called Power Animator. Nobody could deal with that software, so I just went there and studied it. Power Animator was the predecessor of the 3D animation software package Maya by Alias Wavefront, now it's Autodesk. Steve Jobs once said Maya was the most complex program ever written. Long before it was converted to the Macintosh and to Windows, it ran on silicon graphics machines only. I purchased the O2 together with Maya for a lot of money. Most of it via a loan from the bank. It took only a year until I paid everything back. Computer animation was very expensive then, typically 1000 Deutschmarks, or $700 for one second. The price came from traditional hand-drawn 2D animation. The O2, including a very heavy monitor, keyboard and mouse, cost around 20,000 Deutschmarks at that time, which converted to around 13,000 US dollars, or 7,000 British pounds in 1998. The software cost the same. Big investment for a single user like me. Creating 3D animations for film and TV was my one and only reason for this endeavor. Quite risky, but uh, I wrote several books about Maya and it turned out very nicely. The speciality of the O2 was its internal architecture, which connected the components such as the CPU, the graphics card, memory in a very fast way for that time. It had a RISC processor, which was very fast for these purposes as well. And you could not get the O2 without a graphics card. The OpenGL protocol made 3D animation possible on this machine. All STI computers at that time ran on Unix. The Unix version was called IRIX. Lots of floppy disks to update the IRIX OS. Silicon Graphics was founded in 1981. Between 1984 and 1997, the Californian company grew from $5 million to almost $4 billion from annual revenues. In 1995, Silicon Graphics purchased two companies who specialized on special effects in films such as Star Wars and on industrial designs for cars, for example, alias in Toronto that was, and Wavefront in Santa Barbara. That's why this support label is sticking at my or on my O2. It was one company. In 1996, SGI purchased the then leading supercomputer company Cray Research. Quite amazing, Cray was such a big name at that time. The decline came when Maya was ported to Windows NT. That was in 1999. All of a sudden you could run this complex piece of software on a PC which cost a tenth of the price of the O2. I did that transfer to Windows a few years later. Since then the O2 sat up there from where I just moved it down. 10 kilograms quite heavy. The iMac at the time was about the same size and weight. Um, I think Windows computers as well. 
The computer graphics industry, hardware and software had grown so much that SGI in 2009 finally filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Few people these days remember that once highly important company called Silicon Graphics. The O2 was one of their last profitable computers. Time for me to say bye bye to it now. And apart from that, I wish you a very good day.